Hi, this is Ken Hendrickson, W6BZY, with a video for you about the ICOM 7200, which may be the easiest radio to set up for digital mode that's not a modern SDR radio. It has a built-in sound card, so all you really, all you need is two cables to hook it up to your computer, and you're ready to start doing WSJTX, FT8, PSK31, RTTY, you name it, and it can be done with the 7200. So let's get to it. Okay, here we go. We're going to set up the <clears throat> ICOM 7200 for digital modes. I've already set it up, but we'll go through the steps. First thing you want to do is press and hold. You'll get RF power up there. Uh, it's suggested on the video that I watched from about seven years ago to set it at 40. I'm going to leave it at 50, which I've set it at. Somewhere around 40 or 50, since we're doing digital modes, we don't need full power. Um, then if you see this little knob right here, by the way, to change it, you use the big knob, okay? Then over on the other side of where it says set is the knob to change it. Uh, I'm leaving my gain at 100. Uh, and I have data off, which I need to turn to on. So, one way or the other, there we go. And we just push the set button. Now we have that. This time we're going to hold it a little longer. And we get into the <laughs> second menu. Be there's two menus there, so by holding the set a little longer, you get to the second one. I changed the brightness on the screen here just for recording purposes. I usually have it on bright, right, or on high. Right now it's low. Those are the only two settings you have. Uh, we're looking for um, data modulation. And I think I'll go the other way. I don't know. None of these others have anything to do with it. Oh, there we go. Uh, no, that's modulation AM. Uh, that's not it. We're looking for... Okay, we'll keep looking. Looking, looking. USB level, I have it set at, it says in the recommended uh, 75, I'll move it, a, I probably bumped it after I did that. Um, I'll leave a link to the video that I use for this setup. Uh, let's see, there's another, yep, data mod. Now when you come to it, you may find it showing something like this. You want it to be on U. And there is mod and data mod. So we haven't found, there's mod. Same thing, it'll be looking like that. You want to turn it to U. And we got the USB level set. And we're all done. So just push the button again. Uh, again, what we wanted to set was the power around 40 or 50. We wanted to turn data mod on. And then we wanted to make sure modulation, data modulation was turned to U. And modulation was turned to U. And we set the USB level to 75. Now, uh, if you go back and you're going to use it for, use the mic, you're going to have to change those two modulations back to M and A. The modulation and the data modulation, those two need to be reset if you're not doing, if you're using the microphone. So this is just the setup for using the ICOM 7200 uh, in data modes, such as WSJTX, uh, FL Digi, uh, PSK31, uh, and so forth. 
Okay, so that's all there is to that. Okay, so we have set up the digital modes on the ICOM 7200. Now the next step is to get it up and running. Uh, you're going to use two cables. One is going to be a CIV cable, which has a little uh, stereo, stereo, mini stereo plug on the end of it. Uh, it's called a CI, it's called a CT7-17 by ICOM. It's essentially a CIV cable. You can search for them on Amazon or just about anywhere uh, that uh, radio cables are sold. My suggestion would be to be a little careful about buying them. I'm not sure about in today's world, but when Windows 10 came out, a lot of the cheap Chinese knockoffs of the CIV cable were using an imitation FTDI uh, piece of hardware, and Windows 10 and FTDI had a detection system, which if it wasn't the real deal, it wouldn't install the FTDI. Uh, so I've always been a little careful about what I bought. Uh, and I'll leave a link and some information in the, the notes. Uh, I spend about $30 for a cable, and it's a known FTDI device is inside, and it works. Uh, but I also looked on Amazon, and there seemed to be some that were a little less expensive that worked. Personally, considering the pain and agony it took me to figure out why they weren't working, the cheaper ones, I'd make sure that whatever I bought had a genuine FTDI uh, chip inside of the little case. So that being said, the other cable that you're going to use is just the standard AB uh, USB cable like you'd use to hook up a printer. I I would be a little careful and if you have a nice collection of them, look through and see if you have any ones that have a little lump in the cable. Uh, it's probably a ferrite uh, protection type device to keep RF off of the line, uh, keep your signal nice and clean. If you can't find one of those, a nice ferrite bead clipped to the ends would be probably serve the same same purpose. Uh, I think they'll work without them, but I just had p problems in the past with RF and the shack, so I put ferrite beads on anything that doesn't move just about. Okay, so we're going to go to, I uh, to the ICOM website, and I'll leave a link. Uh, the easiest way to get the right driver is to go to ICOM Japan. You don't have to search around, but I'll put this link in the show notes and this uh, particular driver uh, will work for the ICOM 7200 to 7600. I kind of think it works for the 7300 but don't quote me on it. Uh, anyway what you do is you go down here and you click that you've read it. I've never read it but some of you may and want to tell me what it says and then you download it go to your downloads folder and double click on it. Do all of this before you plug in any cables into your uh, computer. Because when you plug them in, then the drivers get installed. So make sure that uh, this particular driver it gets installed on your computer before you hook up that USB cable. The CIV cable may detect it uh, without any FTDI drivers and do the installing for you. If you have any problems and you have the real deal, you can always go to the FTDI website and down there, drivers, unload what's, what uh, didn't work from Windows and put the real deal in. I think I had to do that on a few occasions, but not often. Okay, so now that that's done, I've already downloaded WSJTX, and in fact, I probably had it up and running, but I'm going to go through the steps that it takes after you've installed the drivers and everything and you've plugged in the cables to your radio uh, what you want to do is go to the device manager the quick and easy way that i always do it i go over to the windows uh, tab windows icon in the left hand corner and i click my right mouse button and i then go up to device manager and choose it 
and I'm looking for the uh, the ports when I do this and I hope this is going to show up okay I have a kind of a high definition screen here this is where you want to look where it says ports com and LPT and you just click it so you can see what they are and you can see that the silicone labs is on com 6 that's the regular USB cable the other one the one that says USB serial port com 7 is the uh, CIV cable and in most instances you're going to be using that for rig control and all of the audio and everything is going to be going over the silicon labs uh, so I'll just minimize this in case I have to look back thing to remember when you're sitting up setting up uh, WSJTX is COM7 it'll probably find this other one for you uh, but it doesn't hurt to know it's COM6, but you're not going in WSJTX at least you're not looking for COM6 You're setting up the radio control and it's going to be COM7 Another thing you can do I should have uh, mentioned this before if you go to properties you can kind of look at the uh, port uh, Under details here not there. Sorry port settings you can see it's set at 9600 baud. I'm going to change that to 192 because I know it works. Uh, that's what I have it set for my um, IC7300. Uh, it's 81 and no parity, so I'm going to just say OK. Uh, if yours is, it, it'll work at 9600. I just I know it works at 192 also. So we're going to go down. I've already installed WSJTX and I've stuck it on the bottom panel. So I'm launching it here. It's not going to work because I haven't got the port set right. So when you get this error, if you've just installed it, you're probably going to have to say, uh, go through an, an, an opening screen. But you'll get an error message if you haven't set the COM ports, which I haven't done. Everything else is set up on the radio for me. You can see the last time I used this, I have an ICOM 705 that's uh, replacing the 7200 as my traveling radio. So I'm going to go and look here and in the ICOM list for the 7200. The 7200 has been a wonderful workhorse for me. Uh, and I'm going to put this at 19.2 and remember it was COM7 Okay, and I'm going to set it and this is what we saw on the COM port 8, 1 and none uh, And up here we're going to set it to cat the all these settings are exactly the same as the 7300 I have replaced the 7300 with the 7200 several times and it uh, just slips in nicely. I do have to remember to change uh, sometimes when I swap radio sometimes I have to change the COM ports. Most often I forget to change the rig and uh, anyway we go down here and we hit test cat and you can see it went green test push to talk and it went red and that's really all there is to it. We have an up and running uh, ICOM 7200 running WSJTX just fine. Now, in your case, the first time you run it, you may have to go over here and mess with the audio. And you can see, I didn't. It does. It says two. I have no idea why it says two, but what you want to set it on is codec. Okay. And depending on the operating system, you can see it didn't find the the other codec. So now we have it on four, which doesn't make any sense either, since we know that when we looked at the device manager I think I still have it open here that there is no 4 it's 7 and 6 so I don't know what any of that means but it works that's the most important thing uh, let's see 20 meters and okay and the radio is set right we're on COM7 we've tested it and we're not getting anything. Okay, if this happens to you, one of the things you should probably do is to, uh, it was just a little slow reacting. Here we go. We're getting signals coming in. 
if you find out you have a whole bunch of like this is a new installation and you have a logbook or you've run WSJTX on other systems you might want to look at one of my videos where I show you how to copy over the WSJTX ADIF file so that it knows what countries you've worked before and things like that but uh, I'll do one more thing here before we quit and that is and I'll give it a try anyway and I will go down here and I'm going to call CQ just to make sure that it's broadcasting okay there we go we are transmitting of course it's not the ideal time it's around 1.30 in the afternoon here in uh, California this uh, I find that here on the west coast that I have a lot better luck in the early morning uh, using FT8 I'm hitting the east coast really well I'm picking up Europe usually but uh, we're broadcasting really good and as I said I've used this as a substitute for my ICOM 7300 many times in digital modes in particular and it has worked perfectly fine so I hope you found this video helpful if so you might think about checking uh, the thumbs up thing always helpful and um, that you might also subscribe if you want to see some more videos on digital mode radio and as you can see up there I seem to have fallen uh, started calling CQ right in the middle of uh, two other signals probably doesn't help uh, so I'm going to move over here out of the way where it doesn't seem to be any signals oh my I just landed on another one I seem to be really lucky today uh, <laughs> or unlucky I should say okay well I'm going to wrap it up here uh, I hope that any of you that have 7200s will enjoy it it's a great radio uh, it's probably the best of the before software defined radios in terms of ease of setting up I'm not saying it's the best radio but it's got a built-in sound card you don't have to buy any additional boxes uh, two cables and you're up and running okay this is Ken W6 BZY day in 73 and I hope to see you in another video